Are you tired of hiding your smile? Maybe it's time to get some help from G4 by Goldpaw. Their talented technicians specialize in creating brand new permanent teeth in just 24 hours. With as few as four titanium implants, you can enjoy a fully customized bridge for your upper and or lower set of teeth. You can have peace of mind knowing that the G4's experienced lab technicians have designed more than 15,000 new smiles. You can have a new smile that looks, feels, and functions just like natural teeth. Patients from all over the world travel to G4 to get their permanent smiles in just 24 hours and change their lives forever. Booking an appointment has never been easier. Simply visit yourteeth.com today and schedule your appointment with G4 by Golpa. Mention this podcast when you book to save $1,000. So what are you waiting for? Get ready to show off your new confident smile with G4 by Golpa. Visit yourteeth.com today and start your journey to a new permanent smile in just 24 hours. G4 by Golpa. Powered by technology. Inspired by patience. You are listening to the Starter Girls podcast with Jennifer Lodi. Whether you are starting a project, starting a business, starting a brand, or starting a movement, we are here to talk about it. And the Starter Girls show is brought to you by Walt Mills, photographer of Glad Models Agency. If you are here in the Dallas or surrounding area and looking for some photography, check out Walt Mills. You can learn more about him at photosbywalt.com. And with that, we're going to get things started. Today <laughs> is a great day to be brave. You might as well start now. You have the power to change your circumstances any day you decide. Let today be that day. Rise up, be amazing, be you, do you. All right, friends, I am super excited to welcome my guest today, <laughs> Joe Lamb to the Starter Girls podcast. Hi. Hi. So I'm going to tell all the listeners a little bit about you real quick, and then we're going to dive into this. Yeah. I know they're going to want to know about you kind of like I wanted to know about you, <laughs> right? So Joe Lamb is the founder and CEO of Project Beauty. This Dallas-based 501c3 nonprofit organization strives to restore confidence in domestic violence survivors through teaching self-love and self-empowerment. As a domestic violence survivor herself, Jo has learned to turn her pain into power and is now on a mission to empower the women around her to remember their divinity, which merely means remembering to see themselves the way God does. Jo believes that every experience is a teacher. Having lived at a shelter herself, Jo uses those experiences to empower survivors by teaching them that their past does not determine their future. Some of the tools that Project Beauty uses to educate women about positive self-dialogue include journaling and affirmation writing. And I love that already. <laughs> <laughs> that is everything I talk about, why yes. that is so important and what we do. And it's, it's important for everyone, really, yeah, really. everyone. So I want to dive into this really quick and just, I don't say really quick, we, we, we have a little time, we can talk about this, <laughs> but I want to dive into this because we all have a story, I feel like, and they're yeah. all very different, and I feel like we never really just arrive there overnight. There's this <sighs> progression that we go through that leads us to this, this whatever this passion, purpose, calling, whatever you want to call it is, and so I want you to take us back and kind of tell us how yeah. this all came about for you. Yeah, so I'm just going to take you through a little journey. Hey, take me through the journey. Um, so I am uh, 12 years old, and I am from Hong Kong. So picture a little girl, you know, in Hong Kong. And, you know, we were pretty poor. I mean, Hong Kong is an uh, industrious city, sure. but there's definitely a classes, class system in place. So my parents struggled, and my father uh, was actually mentally ill. And did not know it. And growing up in Hong Kong in a culture where mental illness wasn't really talked about, and I think we're getting better now, mm -hmm. but in the Asian culture, we just simply don't think mental illness is real for the longest time. So when we brought up to my father that maybe he needs to see a doctor, he would just chunk it up as, I'm tired. I am just mad at my boss. You know, it was always an excuse. Sure. It was never about him. So here I am, 12 years old, and... Um, we're looking to immigrate to America because a um, little history background, Hong Kong is a co British colony okay. and 1997 was coming. And that means that China is going to take Hong Kong back, right, okay. uh, from the British rule. So if you're Chinese, you're very familiar that you don't want to be living under sure. the China rule, sure. right? So we don't want to be in communism. Right, right. 
So my parents uh, really fought hard to bring the family over. So when I turned 12 that year, that opportunity came up. We had to pay tons of money. We had to have family sponsorship. We came here the legal way because gotcha. we knew that this is where we wanted to be sure. for better opportunities. Right. So here we are, pack up all things, and we can only take one box. It wasn't like, you know, where you move from state to wow. state. Literally, yeah. you, as a 12-year-old girl, I looked at all of the, my things in my house and said, you can take one box. Wow. So I just remember, you know, taking the things that are dear to me and not even knowing what's going to happen. And I remember crying on the plane and, you know, not speaking the language and really just being scared. So that in itself yeah. really traumatized right. me looking right. back. Right. Um, so then we get to New York and that's where my other family is. My mom's side sponsor us. So for a whole year, we slept on the floor of my relative's apartment. Wow. Uh, we lived in Brooklyn. Very, very poor. I mean, we cramped into this little space and we did everything we could to earn money. My life was not like a typical 12-year-old. Uh, my dad's illness got even more severe, right? When you, when you multiply the illness with immigrating to a new country, not speaking the English, having his trade taken away. He was a very skilled plumber, owned his own business in Hong Kong, but when he came to New York, he worked in a restaurant, yeah. like most immigrants. So he was very unhappy, very, very angry, and the abuse just got worse. You know, he would beat me and my mom every day. Wow. Um, when, I came to, when I came down to Texas at 16, um, for a while, things were better. And I thought that maybe this was our chance to change. Yeah. You know, I look at my dad. I'm like, maybe finally I'll have my dad. He can come to games and live a normal teenager life. Um, but it wasn't the case. Um, that year, I made up my mind to run away after he nearly killed my mom. And so I ran away very shortly after that, thinking that I can save my family. So I thought money was going to solve everything. I took up jobs and I had a plan that I was just going to come home and bring my sisters into my own apartment and my mom, but that wasn't the case. Right. Um, when I was in the streets, and I call it streets because I was literally homeless, I would float from houses to houses. Some of my friends noticed that behavior were changing at school because I would withdraw and I would have marks on me and people just noticed that there was something really wrong Yeah. because I usually I'm very outspoken. As you mm -hmm. can tell, I'm very mm -hmm. energetic, Sure. but I would, when it comes down to like family and discussions about what's going on at home, I just withdrew. I didn't have an answer. And so some of my friends would take me in like two, three weeks at a time, not really letting me move in, but just letting me stay there. So I couch surfed a lot. Then I met a boy. And what happens is when you're so used to trauma, the men that you're attracted to right. are going to resemble the mm -hmm. same pattern mm -hmm. that you grew up with. So the blueprint Absolutely. that I was taught about love yeah. is that love hurts, love hits, and love is it's going to hurt you. It's insulting. It's going to cross your boundaries, right? Which is not true. Right. So... Meeting this boy and um, him being my savior at the time, I immediately took, like, I just took hold of him and I didn't want to go anywhere else. He took full advantage of that and started, like, manipulating me, brainwashing me. So over time, he completely took over my life. I distanced myself away from my family and friends. Nobody knew where I was. He was a really bad guy. He sold drugs. He had a reputation. But I thought this man loved me. Halloween night came. I was 17 years old. And I was at a parking, I was at a car wash one day. And he saw me doing something that I didn't like. That night, he tied me up. He gave me the worst beating of my life. Mm. And that was the night that he branded me. And I mean, this man tied me up with duct tape, pistol whipped me. And proceeded to tell me that I'm going to give you a lesson that you're never going to forget. Mm. So he went and took wow. a coat hanger, carved it into his initial. And I'm sitting there watching him with my mouth bound with duct tape. And he branded me with his initial. Mm. So that night is the turning point 
Yeah. Because I remember being thrown into the closet in and out of consciousness, bleeding, and just praying that please don't let my mom find me dead. And I remember asking God that night in the closet, what is my purpose? Why do I exist? Because in my in my short life of 17 years, I have experienced nothing but trauma and abuse and pain. And I and I was so suicidal up to that point anyway. So it's like, why do I exist? Well, after that prayer, a series of events took place. And about a year after that, I was able to escape. From that point on, I went straight to a shelter. And I really believe that while I lived at the shelter, a lot of things in my heart and my soul start to awaken. Mm -hmm. And I start to see other women that were struggling and why they were struggling to end the cycle of abuse. Mm -hmm. I would talk to other women in the shelter and we would talk about, you know, why did you stay, girl? Like, why did you stay as long as you yeah. did? And, and one common theme among all the women is that they did not feel that they deserved any better. Mm. Wow. Every single woman yeah. that I talked to felt that that was the best that they can do. Right. Wow. Right? And that's directly tied to your self-esteem, to our self-confidence, our self-worth. So, of course, the shelter that I went to, they did, did a phenomenal job, you know, helping me get on my feet, legal action that needs to be taken, helping me get clothes, get food, all those basic necessities. Great. And so most of us who exit out of the shelter after 90 days are in our own space. Now we're working and we're trying to get on our feet. But guess what? The healing never took place. Right. 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 So you here. That, yeah. And, and, and think about it. This, just think about the people that, you know, that mm -hmm. may have gone through this. Mm -hmm. As soon as they get back on their feet financially, have a place to live. Do they really right. go back yeah. and examine? Hmm. No. Why do I pick these men right. or but women? It resurfaces. It comes back up. Yeah. And so I went through that journey of examining my process and thought I was fine, to be honest. So I got my, got on my feet rebuilt my entire life. By the time I was in my early 20s, I was back in the corporate world. I Nobody knew wow. about my past because yeah. I was very successful, made tons of money. I was very ambitious. I knew what I wanted to do. Um, but guess what? Those wounds inside never went away. So every year, I would go through these mental breakdowns. And for the longest time, I thought it was because I was stressed at work. So I worked in a finance company back then among a lot of men, mm -hmm. very high pressure job. So I thought it's just my stress. Then my therapist, my psychiatrist told me one day, Joe, I'm just going to have to tell you this. And I want you to look at me. You are depressed. You're a highly functional person. Right. With depression. Yeah. With depression. Mm -hmm. And I said, what? No, you don't. And, and, and he said to me, every year you come see me. You got to take these long breaks from work where you just lose it. Yeah. It's like we, we have these wounds and this toxic energy and these trauma that gets bubble up inside. And it's like every year, excuse my language, but my shit box just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> right. It it's was a great way to put it. I like it. <laughs> like that's yeah. what I explain to people is that yeah. each one of us have this box of shit. Yeah. And we, throughout the years, days, weeks, we cramp our shit right. in there. Somebody hurt you. Somebody insulted you. Cramp it in that box. Um, your boss tells you you're not adequate. Put it, I like cramp it. Cramp it in your shit box. <laughs> so by the time my shit box was full, it would explode. Yeah. And guess what? I'm left with shit. Yeah. I can't function. Right. I can't function at work. I couldn't care on my relationship. I just broke down. My body just simply broke down every year. So then I thought, I stopped seeing the therapist. I said, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like most women, they're right. like, yeah, whatever. I don't need to pay you $50. I don't $50. need to pay you to tell me this. Yeah, I yeah. I got this. I'm fine. Yeah. And so then it kept going. And then I had my child. When you have a kid, what's really funny is that you then begin to really look at yourself. Yeah. Now, this, it can go two ways. You can completely ignore your past. And just stay in your toxic energy. Right. For me, it was like an, another awakening moment, right? Because you look back at your life and there are different moments where you're like, ah, see, 
the universe is really trying to tell me that you need to fix you this. You need to fix that box. <laughs> you need to get that box it's, cleaned up. Clean your shit up, right? And here yeah. I am ignoring these chapters yeah. until I had my son. Um, he's eight. He just turned eight. And I remember I had to get off my antidepressants. And my doctor goes, Joe, I know that you've been taking this meds for a while, but by the time the third trimester comes, you have to get off your meds. And I said, okay, I will. And he, she goes, just to let you know, most people who get off these meds will probably have a very severe depression mm. once you have the child. Mm. So I'm going, great. And of course, just like he said, I suffer postpartum, severe postpartum, because I never cleaned out my shit. Yeah. So now, now you add on the baby. Right, right, right. <laughs> now it's like a lot of stuff. Yeah. And so um, I, I spiraled. You know, I spiraled into depression and then went back to a therapist, got back on my meds. But a year in, I said, eh, I'm fine. It was always I get good enough mm -hmm. to just kind of on the surface to the world to look like I'm back in business, yeah. but never really healing the inside. Then the universe sent me another moment. Yeah. 2017, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, a lot of you guys may be familiar yeah, with lupus. Right. This is the sister disease. Lupus affects your organs. Rheumatoid arthritis affects your joints. Right. So here I am, handicapped at the age of, what, I'm in my early 30s now, and I couldn't move, couldn't open my own water bottle, I couldn't drive, I couldn't walk. I had two boys at home that I could not take yeah. care of. That was my lowest point. I thought postpartum was my yeah, lowest no, point. Yeah, no, I've had a chronic disease, so I know. I know. Yeah, what how did to you build. have? Oh, I have a nerve condition in my face called trigeminal neuralgia, oh which is is a very painful condition. So yes. I, I understand, and it's invisible because people don't know that you right, have it. Right. So my point, not to diminish yours, yeah. I'm saying I relate absolutely to yes. what you're talking about being in a chronic condition that you can't free yourself from, and, and your health is probably, I always say, one of the absolute. <laughs> yes. If you don't have your health, you have nothing. You have nothing. Like, you have nothing. Because even if you got to go through something, if, you're, if yes. you have your health, you can at least fight. When you don't have your health, you can't even fight. You're exactly. just down. And I think that's what really made me feel like that was the lowest point. Because yeah. if I'm in bed all day. Right. Like, I can't even open a water bottle. Yeah. So, I mean. So what did you do to get, what did you do? this yeah. was her. So, before my husband left or whatever, they would open the bottles in the house. Yeah. Open everything for yeah. me. And that was my life. And so, then I got desperate, right? Then I started looking into holistic modalities. Right, right. Meditation. Uh -huh. Yoga. I was like, at that point, I was like, whatever it takes. Thanks to make you better, Yes. And that's when I really started my healing journey. I love it. When God, universe, source, whatever you want to call this, mm -hmm. higher consciousness, mm -hmm. when your life completely stands mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. no job, no child, mm -hmm. you cannot do nothing, mm -hmm. you're now forced to do with your shit. Absolutely. I love it. And Absolutely. that's what happened. And that's <laughs> your story. No. And you know what's so interesting to me is that your story and my story are so different. We have a lot of resonating pieces because I can understand a lot of what you're yes. saying. And I absolutely agree with you 100%. When you hit rock bottom mm. and your health is so crucial to you as a human being. And when you hit yes. that rock bottom and I talk about, you know, I was just telling somebody today my story and I was talking about this moment when I came in out of my, what I would say was my final doctor's appointment. Mm. I may have shared this with you. It was in December of 2015, one year shy of my four year anniversary since I had started dealing with my health condition and I was in a very suicidal state yeah. and I've never been one to be in a suicidal state. So I really know what that feels like. And I just remember walking out and it was like, do or die. That's yeah. where I was, where my mind was. It was, you talk about your box. That's where I was. It yes. was either clean it up or end it. That's where I was. So yes. I'm getting chills even talking about this because no. I remember that moment. So very clearly yeah. thinking I've got three kids at home right now. And they need me. And I have missed four years of their life because I've been consumed by a condition that I've allowed to control me. And so 100% I agree with you. When you hit yes. the rock bottom and you get to the bare minimum and you realize I've got to change something, you're open. You become a vessel to yes. give me what I need to heal. And you recognize through that journey that it's not just about the diet. It's not just it's about not. the food. There is a... It's so interestingly, I was just on the phone with somebody 
last week who has this condition. So back when I had when I found out about it, we didn't have Facebook groups. I didn't yeah, know anybody yeah. that had it. Oh my gosh. So I, I was just a, a unique bird out yeah. there that had this condition that nobody knew about. Like, how did you get that? Like, right? Hello, I don't know. And now I know all these people that have it. But she asked me, she said, what did you do to cure it? And I said, well, I could tell you all day long, I did a ketogenic diet for 22 months and that did it. Yes, that did get the inflammation out of my body, but there were so many pieces to that puzzle that I put in place during that time yes. that were steps that just evolved over time. Because even when I came out and got off my medication, I wasn't still healed from it. I had been traumatized from having gone through this. Yes. I had been defined by this I had lived four years in chronic severe pain every day of my life, and I didn't yeah. know how to evolve outside of that. Right. It became your identity. Exactly. So 100%, I get everything that yes. you are saying because it is such a journey that you go through, which I imagine is what led you to what you're doing today. Yeah. What, so, what you're doing today. So tell us a little bit about this really quick. In 2018, you know, when I had my massive awakening, Project Beauty was one of the ideas that I felt in my heart that I needed to act on. Right. It was up to this point where I'm like, okay, this is what I'm called to do. Yeah. At that time I was working for Yelp. I did a lot of their marketing work, not the sales, the marketing. Yep. <laughs> and um, I would host events throughout DFW and we would partner up with businesses. And so in one of those events, I told the salon owner, I said, how would you like it if we brought in women who actually needed this? Yeah. What if I were to go and bring women who've been through, who are widowers, who are, who've been through chemo, who are domestic violence survivors, just women who, who've been through trauma yeah. and can use the healing. She goes, you know what, Joe, I trust you. Go for it. With that said, I invited 10 women and hosted them that night, that following two weeks and the, the energy in that room. And the woman who cried and said, Joe, this was the best thing that right. we've ever experienced. I thought, this is it. Yeah. This is what I have to do. So honestly, no plan. Never done anything in the nonprofit world other than just volunteer and, you know, do, do yeah. committee work. Um, but you know how when that calling comes, mm -hmm. just like your podcast, just mm -hmm. like your work, you know this is your path. Right. So immediately I started calling shelters, doing the work. I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew that it was the path because every shelter that I went to, that I call, they were like, Joe, we were just talking about this. Yeah. We were just talking about how we needed this program. How soon can you guys come in? Yeah. So within six months, we had signed on five different shelters. And now we serve like 10 different organizations. But just thinking that in, in six months alone, yeah. every door that we knocked on, they said, we need this program. Oh, absolutely. I can see that, yeah. So what we do is we bring that beauty experience into the shelter, right? So we have four different programs. Okay. Um, the first program is the gift of beauty, where we go into the shelter and we bring full-size makeup, self-care items that they can use on their own time. We want to teach women and children and the survivors how it looks for mm -hmm. you to cherish yourself, to just do some self-care because that is really the first step to honoring yourself, right. right? So then the second program that we do is the actual beauty day where we come in, we bring estheticians, massage therapists, nail techs, I mean, all different beauty professionals. And we come in and we just set up the entire shelter like a spa. Love it. That'll be a facial yeah. station, nail station. And let me tell you, these women... Most of them have never gone through these treatments. They were not allowed right. or they just never had the resources. Yeah. And the and the person that walks in before the treatment and the person that emerges from the treatments is just unbelievable. Yeah, you I get two it. different people. Mm -hmm. The third program that we offer is the Angel Clinic. And what the Angel Clinic does is that we actually provide funding for anyone who has physical disfigurement okay. from past abuse. So in 2018, when we're visiting Hope's door, um, a young lady walked into the room and she had a missing eye. Oh my goodness. Wow. And immediately I knew this woman has gone through some yeah. horrifying experiences. She didn't want to talk at first. She, she was very close, very to herself, like most people that we see. But as the makeup starts rolling out and people start getting their hair done, people let their guard down, right? Like right. when you go to a salon, you want to talk to your stylist. It's this universal language of beauty that everybody understands. So she began to 
lower her, you know, mm-hmm. wall and explain to me that she was pregnant when she was punched by her abuser. Oh my goodness. And she punched her so hard that he lost, she lost her eye and her hearing. Oh my goodness. So I said, what can I do to help you? She yeah. goes, well, I found a doctor who would do it for reduced cost, the prosthetic eye. I just don't have the money. I said, you know what? We're going to get you those, th- those funds in no time. We raised all the money in two days. I love it. And we took this woman to the doctor yeah. and sat there with her as she was getting this eye put in. And then we gave her entire makeover process with the photo shoot, hair, makeup, all of it. Wow. So she yeah. can have a new start. So that C in okay. itself is what started the angel claim. Gotcha. So since then, we've done tattoo removals. We've done scar revisions for branding that happens on sex trafficking victims. We get those requests all the time. Mm-hmm. We just don't hear about it. Right. Because we're not tuned into that. But there's so many women out there walking around right now, like myself, who have scars and tattoos from their abusers. So just imagine yourself starting a new life. Mm-hmm. And every day, you've got to right. look down at this tattoo with someone's name. Yeah, I imagine. How yeah. do you heal from that? Yeah. So the last lady that we helped in our angel clinic, her name was Dawn, and you can read her story on our social. She had her tattoo removed finally, and she said, oh, my God, after eight years, I am finally free from this man. Yeah. And I just looked at her and said, oh, my God, I'm just so glad that Project Beauty exists for that because we just don't think right. about that, right? And the last thing that we do is the trauma healing. Well, we bring in affirmation writing. We talk about journaling. We talk about art therapy. All of the channels in which we can allow someone to express their emotions without using words. I love it. Because a lot of times the pain that they go through, they just can't talk about it. Yeah. So the art therapy gives them a medium to express. And the affirmation and the journaling is really to reprogram that negative belief. That has been ingraining in them for all those years of abuse, right? Yeah. The affirmation changes them. The journaling allows them to really have awareness of what they feel. Mm -hmm. Because once again, if you don't acknowledge it, you can't heal it. Right, right. So in a nutshell, that's what we do. I love it. Uh, We provide a space for healing that we don't really see right now, right? We we don't think about healing as a separate component. Well, you and I do. We do. We do, yeah. We get it. We know the importance of it. But yes, you're right. When you're going through a crisis, you don't see that component because you're in survival and you're at that moment. And and survival is different. It's different for everybody. And everybody goes through different kinds of survival. I think it's all a similar thing, but we all process it very differently. And we all have different levels of what we call we have to survive through whatever the trauma is or whatever that is. And so I think you're right. I think that when you're in that moment, You're not thinking about that healing process. It's when you come out on that other side, you realize there's more to this. You've got to heal inside. You've got to internally heal. It's not just about physical healing. It's internally getting right with what you've gone through or right with what you need to to move in order to heal, to move forward. And it's usually when they hit a stumbling block. I want to be honest. Like most women don't think about their healing until they start dating again. Yes. Yes. And then what happens is they go out and they start finding the same men Mm -hmm. with similar characteristics. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, why, why am I, I doing the same? Why am I having the same thing again? Did you ever reprogram <laughs> your yeah, thinking to right. think differently? But that's like everything yeah. in life, Joe. If you think about everything oh my gosh. in life, the very thing that we don't want, we continue to do because yes. we keep telling ourselves we don't want them. It's like we're reinforcing it. We yes. just keep talking like, I don't want to date those kind of people. I don't want to date those kind of people. But you keep finding those kind yeah. of people. And it's until you start raising your level of expectation yes. and your deserved level that you recognize, no, I don't have to have that in my life. But I think that's like everything. I think it's that way with jobs. I yeah. think it's that way it with is. your circle of influence everything like what you think you deserve mm-hmm. you will never rise above until you make that level of your for yourself higher yep. so your story is so incredible like girl we could talk about this forever i love <laughs> what you're doing i love all of it and i can't even ask you any questions so many questions because i just wanted to hear your story and what you've got how Thank this all kind of came about because yeah. I believe the story is what is important. And I think it people is. resonate with stories. And, you know, I think a lot of times we, that people see us with, you know, and they see us on this outside and they don't really know, they see the, the limelight of everything. Yeah, yeah. And they don't really know that behind all of that success, there is a story. There's something that's back oh, there that has yes. to bring you to that level. And so I, I think what you're doing is so incredible. I do want to ask you, um, 
this question before I move on to some fun questions yeah. here. What is the best part of this for you? What do you love about all of this? Seeing the transformation. It gives me pure joy. And you kind of touched upon that earlier. So yeah. I, I definitely can see that. I think people, when they ask me that question, they expect me to give some really whirly answer. Oh, I, love I it. want to give world peace, and yeah. I and, and that's great too. I'm not diminishing, right? That. But I really believe that when you do something, it has to be for your own joy, mm -hmm. because you don't need anyone to motivate that. Mm -hmm. When I get up in the morning, girl, I cannot wait to get up out of bed to go change the it. world, I because my own joy and my own yeah. purpose perpetuates mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. If we're doing it for anything other than our internal reasons if mm -hmm. we're doing it for external reason mm -hmm. at some point that's that's gonna sizzle out 100 percent. i love it you just like spot on spot on <laughs> because you're working from a from a purpose and a passion and that's what i call flow when you get Boom. in the zoom love it is it not is it not awesome flow. when you get in your purpose and your passion you're yes. falling you are no longer forcing energy you're working with what you love to do your gifts and your talents yes. And you wake up excited. You don't. And you're wake magnetic. <laughs> and exactly. And you don't wake up thinking when's Friday because that's when I'm getting paid, right? You're thinking I love this day. Like yes. I, it's so funny we had this conversation because just yesterday I got up in the morning and I may or may not share this with you. My husband's an engineer. He's very serious. We uh, talk about the DIC. Really? He's like the opposite of yes, you. Yes, <laughs> complete opposite. And so yesterday morning he was in a hurry because he rides his bike to work in the morning. He's got to be out at seven o'clock because he's okay. got to go. I'm like, this is so much work. Just get showered and go to work. You got all that going on. And I have a lot to say. Like I just have a lot to talk about and so yesterday he's eating his eggs and i'm like something good's gonna happen today and, and i did i said that to him i said something magical is gonna happen today i don't know what it is but something's gonna you happen feel it today. yeah and i know he's over there thinking how much money is this gonna cost me <laughs> And I'm always like that. I'm like, who am I going to meet? What's going to happen? Yes. How am I going to use my influence on somebody? How is, gonna, how is somebody going to impact my day and make my day better? And how am I going to be able to make somebody else's day better? That's so right. I love what you're doing. we got yes. the energy flowing. So i got to ask you a couple fun questions because you've got you got it going on. But these are my fun rapid yeah, yeah, i got to throw these at you really quick. I love these. So morning or night person? Night. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't know that. But yes, you got it going on. That's why your energy's all going right now. <laughs> We're getting close tonight. I'm going to be tapping out in about two hours on you. I'll be going downhill. All right. Um, cat or dog person? Ooh, dog. Dog. Do you have a dog? I don't anymore. Okay. But you like dogs. I do like I like dogs. them all. I have everything. So it's, I, yeah, it's I would to be able to answer that. Because I'm like, I got cats. I got dogs. I got rabbits. I got, yeah. got like the sun. Like, like if you have animals. a boy, you got like all kinds of things, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. And Joe, what would you say is your favorite food? Sushi. I like sushi too. We need to go have sushi. Let's do that. I love sushi. Let's do like it. Like that, sushi and chips and salsa are like oh, my two. Yeah. I can eat those probably every day. Me in too. Case so. <laughs> yeah, you just, we could just, we don't even need anything else. We just rotate that. <laughs> exactly. And then every once in a while, I'll throw some custard in there and I'm good. Mm. Like mix that in the middle. We got it. All right. And if you were on a desert, deserted island, okay. I was going to say dessert. I was going to say dessert. I was like, I got, oh, that sounds good. And, <laughs> dessert. If you were on a deserted island, you have your food so you can have your basic things, what would be the one thing you'd have? to have with you chapstick that's chapstick that's good i'm not anybody say chapstick i cannot live without my chapstick that so that would drive me crazy <laughs> if i didn't have something to moisturize my Just lips like i got on a chapstick <laughs> got on a chapstick it's so funny before water <laughs> that's good well your lips will be hydrated they're exactly. gonna stay hydrated right? i love it and if you could be any superhero or character for a day what would you pick Oh gosh, I don't. I don't questions. know a lot of superheroes. Well, what about a character? Or make one up. Make a yeah, pretty Joe character. I, I think I would just be me. I okay. would still be me. I, yeah. I honestly feel like I'm a superhero every day. I like that. You know, because we. we I think that's good. You're owning your superpower. I, I am. I feel like I'm a superhero every day I love because it. love is my superpower. So I don't think I want to change anything. I love that. You are incredible. I just I admire you. Your story is Thank just you. so impactful. And to be able to come on the other side of that. And I know when I was writing my book and I was writing mm -hmm. and I didn't disclose every I have not disclosed everything in my book. There was trauma that we went through with my daughter during that time. Mm -hmm. There was a lot a lot of other things that I won't and I respected her privacy was part yes. of the reason I did not disclose that. But it was a very difficult time. So when I was writing my book and then I didn't even realize the impact until I went back and wrote it. And then I had read what was written. That's when we talk about like not cleaning it yes. up and having it come back. That was when I, I remember sitting and reading that and looking at that and going, wow, that was hard. Like that was yeah. so hard. You yes. know what I mean? Oh my god! But gosh. now I look at it and I, I think back and I think, you know, somebody asked me on another podcast, she said, 
do you feel like you had to go through a crisis? And I, girl, I've been through a lot of crisis because I feel like there's some of us that have to learn a lot of lessons to be able to help well, out. It's the hero's journey, girl. Yes. That's what it is. And some of us are very stubborn. You know, we got to dive in. We got to have a lot of crisis before we come on that other side and be like, you know what? I think I'm done creating crisis for myself. I need to help other people, <laughs> you know, but this, this gal asked me when I was on her podcast, if I felt like I needed to go through a crisis to be able to help other people. And I mm. said, I kind of think, yeah, I had to have my own testimony. I had to have my own proof yeah. that I could walk on the other side of Absolutely. something so that now I could show people that, hey, if you want to do something and you want to do it bad enough, you can do it. You want to come out of the mess you're in, you can get out of it any day you decide what to do yes. that day. That's, That's where that mantra so comes from. Every time, every time I'm in a little bit of a funk, I talk about mantras all the time. Anytime I find myself in that little stick, you know, sticky little funk we get in, yeah. that mantra comes up. Girl, I, I can change that. I can change it like that fast. And it's powerful because exactly. we all need those anchoring thoughts, right? Part of the reason why we teach affirmations is that most of us do not have those anchoring thoughts right. it, to fall back on. So you have your mantra for me. Yeah. I always tell myself I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Love it. it doesn't matter what situation is. Something could have just catastrophically happened. Yeah. But I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm exactly where right. I'm supposed to be. The universe always has my back. So this is just that moment. This is just contrast. Yep. And I'm okay with it. But without that foundation, though, we would not be able 100%. to overcome. So yeah. I agree. You need those tragedies and those stories. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and they give you, and especially if you're in that place where you have the ability to make change, you know, and if you think back, you know, I had a gal on my show. I've talked about this several times on my podcast. We always talk about your strengths come and they find you. They eventually catch up with you, you know, and whatever your gift or your talent is, I feel like those things happen to help kind of bring those up, mm. help you find those yes. and use that. And so whatever that is, you know, whether that's talking in a platform or it's going in and doing, you know, bringing things to people, whatever that service is. I think that those things give you allow you to find that voice, allow you yes. to find the means or whatever that is to get that out there. So you're doing great stuff. And so if our listeners wanted to find out a little bit more about your project, yeah. where do we send them? Yes. So if you want to volunteer, if you want to donate products monetarily, whatever, we'll take it all. Um, it's www.theprojectbeauty.org right that. there on the screen. Um, and you can sign up to volunteer or donate anytime. And follow us on social media, Project Beauty DFW on Facebook and Instagram. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. And we'll make sure when this goes out that we get all the tags yeah. where they need to be so that awesome. people can check it out. So definitely to our audience, check it out. So Joe, I want to tell you, thank you for coming on your Thanks. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your story because I know that is a difficult to do. And, you know, I hopefully our audience, somebody will pick this up, this message yeah. and really, you know, come check out what you're doing. Maybe want to get a part of that or maybe the, your story will resonate with somebody so yes. that they step up. They come, That's they, really they come what this is about. with the healing, you know, because you're right. That is what it's all about. If you help somebody change, you've done something great, right? Yes. So I want to say to our listeners... Thanks for being a great audience Thank and listening you. to this story. It's incredible. If you enjoy our podcast, please be sure you give us a rating on iTunes and check out our YouTube page and hit that subscribe button. And of course, we are on iHeart and Amazon as well. And with that, I want to leave, let our list, or leave our listeners with a final thought. I'm too excited. I can't even talk <laughs> anymore. All this greatness. We don't even know how strong we are until we are forced to bring that hidden strength forward. In times of tragedy, of war, of necessity, people do amazing things. The human capacity for survival and renewal is awesome. And that yes. is by Isabel, I want to say Alende. Mm, I love Isn't that. Isn't that great? It fits so perfectly with yes. what we're talking about right now. So it. to our listeners, you guys be safe, take care, and be kind to one another. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.